All right. <clears throat> okay, the purpose of this video is going to be me talking about what I look at for Nana, the YouTube MMA predictor, I guess. I don't think we have a better name than that. Um, okay. Simply put, first up, most important thing, knowledge. Um, if you don't have knowledge of sport, you're not going to make very good predictions. You may get lucky. You may honestly even have a winning record. You can do that because there's a one in two chance you predict who wins. But what I look for is the guy who maybe has the wrong pick. Maybe he has a pick that disagrees with me entirely. But when he makes that pick and he talks about it and he backs it up and he makes good points about it, that I, 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 I know he knows what he's talking about, that he's not shitting out of his ass, that he can defend that pick, even if that guy loses, even if the fight goes no way how the judge is going to go, the pick and the reasonings are sound. Two, you know, I like to see guys who don't pawn themselves off as the best. I like to see that because it's a community. I like a little bit of community mindedness. That's why I like Chase. Um, fandom UFC fan because I mean he gives shout outs he regularly helps out the little guys and I think you need to do that I think we don't want to turn into basically if you watch pro wrestling um, shooters I guess what they're called um, is generally horrible because they're, they're shitting on each other all the time and you don't want that in this kind of world um, okay what else do you need open mindedness um, the ability to admit that you're wrong, the ability to listen to other people's opinions and recognize what they're saying, what their facts are, what, what they're solid on. I mean, I, I'll get in my head, um, let, me, let, me think of it, let me think of a great example it would be, um, I, recently, I recently picked um, Andre Arlovsky to defeat Jake O'Brien at UFC 83, and we'll get to that when the time comes, and I'll break it down then. But uh, Chris, who's one of the guys I'm gonna give a shout out to at the end here too, um, kinda came to me with a lot of points about why Jake O'Brien would win, and it got me thinking. I'm, I'm still picking Arlovsky, but that being said, I do respect what Chris is saying. I respect, I think Jake O'Brien's a solid pick. In MMA, in a closely contested fight, you have to be able to listen to other people's points of view. And maybe they'll change your mind, maybe they won't, but you gotta be willing to listen. Um, let's see what else, do. what else can I think of here? All right. You need to, ha you need to be open-minded about orgs too. You need, I think you really do. You can't just look at a guy's fight finder, for example, and say, he beat this guy. So he should be like this. No, you have to go back and you have to watch the footage. If you have not seen a guy, you have to watch the footage of the guy fighting to know what he's really like, what his tendencies are, what his strengths are, and how did he beat this guy? I mean, what was the circumstances? Was, I mean, you can use the thought that, you know, hell, I mean, some fights results are very, very misleading, like uh, Gonzaga knocking out Crow Cup. Uh, now, Krokop has been very bad lately, but some part, someone who's not seen that fight may go back and say, well, Gonzaga must be a, a phenomenal striker, and he's not. I mean, he's a stable striker. He's a good striker. He may be an above average, but he's not a great striker. Um, another one would be, um, okay, uh, say you have two guys like Diego Sanchez and Carl Parisian going at it. I mean, you can look at that. You could look at that fight and say, man, these guys are actually pretty good strikers, but I don't think either of them really are. I mean, when they fight strikers, you can see it. That's the thing. You gotta be able to do the research, have the knowledge. You want a knowledge base, but you want to be willing to expand it. You don't take anything you know for granted. Um, we all have our biases. There's nothing that'll ever stop that. And I'm not gonna say anything about it, really. All right, so basically, okay, the reasons I picked these guys, the three that I have up on the side are, okay, first up is Chris. Anyone I picked is under 30 subscribers. Chris has got the most out of the group, but he's only got 24. But Chris, very solid picker. Um, he has some biases at times, but he has a really, really good base of knowledge. Uh, he really understands it. He really watches fights and he does 
and he's willing to put his his preferences aside at times unless it's Shinya Aoki versus Jay-Z Cal Candy. But still, uh, that being said, that being said, I mean he's excellent. I find it ridiculous that he's only he is a little new, but I still find it considerably ridiculous that this man has only I don't know how many subscribers it is. Uh, well, I just said 24 subscribers. I, I think that's ridiculous. All right. Next up, we have Matty Freeze. Um, okay, I'm not sure if Matty's doing videos because he didn't do pics, pics for UFC 80, but I'm going to put him on here anyways. He has 12 subscribers. Uh, he's incredibly hilarious. He does have a rough idea of what he's talking about. I mean, as much as some of the other guys that have a lot more guys that were running for them, I mean, he knows what he's talking about. He can... He backs up his opinions very well, and he has a decent prediction rate. And the final guy I'm going to talk about is the MMA originalist, who doesn't do a lot of prediction videos, admittedly, but I mean, he talks about MMA a lot, and it's very, very solid. I mean, he's, got, he's, he's been following it for a very long time. He's a great knowledge of the sport. Um, he, I believe his name is Joe, for the record. Um, He's very, very good, and he's just incredibly knowledgeable. In he's very good at taking advice from other people. So, what he's presenting to you is going to help you a little bit. I encourage people to subscribe to these people because you widen your horizons. And you, if, if we really wanted you to subscribe to just one guy, we'd only have one guy doing videos. It would probably be either Dan because he's incredibly entertaining, the fat UFC critic, of course, or Jeremy. The MMA analyst because he's probably the most knowledgeable of the group. But still, I mean, we make different videos because we want to present different ideas, and there's going to be some uniformity to them because I mean, a lot of us there are going to be some one-sided fights that we're going to entirely agree on. But there's going to be some very, very close fights, and I think people really, if you're going to get into MMA, you should really look at. If you're new, if you, if you're an old and knowledgeable fan, I think you should still watch us because. And we made point on something you never thought of. You could maybe even comment on our video and come up with something that we've never thought of, and you know that would be incredibly cool. Um, that's about it, I guess. Um, this was really not scripted, as you can tell. But uh, basically, subscribe to those guys. They're really, really good. They won't steer you wrong. I mean, they'll lose. We all lose. We don't predict it 100%. In fact, the best prediction percentages aren't necessarily the best predictors. They can guess. I mean, you can flip a coin. You could get them all right. But still, I think it's it's more important to hear the analysis of why they're picking this way. So that's all I got to say. I'll be back with Fight Night, I think it's 12, predictions, and uh, peace.